I'm Christian Griego, and today I want to talk to you about something I've been observing for quite a while. And it took me a long time to be able to put words to this subject, and so I wanted to share this with you so that you can think about what kind of player you are. Um, I was talking to an audiophile, like I always do. Um, audiophiles, trombone players, trumpet players, they're just kind of my people uh, who I talk with. I'm always around. So working with musicians is very similar to working with audiophiles. They're always trying to improve aspects of their playing or their, their stereo, the sound. And they'll kind of do anything to get the small marginal gains is what I would call them. Now, watching pros come in year in, year out and playing in front of me and setting them up, I've discovered something. There's two types of players. There's a passive player and there's an active player. Now, what do I mean by this? I had an audiophile tell me he was a passive listener because he wasn't a, a musician and musicians he found were active listeners. And so they had a, musicians struggled to hear things because they were focusing on the performance or aspects of the performance where a passive listener was just taking in the music and listening to the recording and listening to and being passive he felt was actually better made him more qualified for their the, the job that he was doing which is designing because being passive he wasn't skewed in one direction and so i started thinking about active versus passive and it's the same on brass playing we have one camp that is very active engaged we have another camp that is very relaxed and very um the instrument channels them and i've been working with some players and i've been i, I was actually working on this i was working on becoming more of a passive player. And I, I can actually feel problems in an instrument very quickly because being a passive player, I'm relaxed and the instrument just channels me and I can feel what the instrument is doing, where if you're more of an active player, you will make it work regardless of what the instrument is. Now, everyone is passive in their playing in one area or another, in one register. Now it's easier to become passive mid-low, right? Everyone has to have a certain percentage of being active as you ascend because it, it, we have to do the work, especially uh, to a certain extent above the staff. So there's always a percentage of being active, but that ratio of active to passive and efficiency, a professional player, what separates them from a younger player a lot of time is they've learned how to become more passive in the upper register, more efficient. You could say that's just another word for it. So. I would consider these things and think about these things. And as you uh, ascend in, your, in, your, uh, in the registers, are you becoming more active? And are you becoming too active so that it's actually fatiguing you? Because the instrument's not fatiguing you, you're fatiguing you, or something you're doing is fatiguing you, right? And so that percentage of active versus passive is important to think about. And I find so many times that people can't get notes out in the upper register because they're so active that this is no longer resonating. If it's not resonating, it's not passive and it's not gonna vibrate. If it's not gonna vibrate because you're in the way, because it's flexed, you're not gonna get resonance. Now the other, I went too far. I went so passive that I started getting air pockets, which is not ideal either. And so now I've been having to come back and become a little bit more, and, and and dialing in this active versus passive um, approach so that I can obviously have endurance, make it to the end of the piece without endurance problems or and having resonance and all. And, and you're going to become a more consistent player when you realize what you need to do in what register. Um, but I've really found that um, more the professionals that have really figured it out will have less endurance problems because they're more passive in the instrument. They're just blowing through. And Yes, their corners are firm, but this is always the, the percentage of passiveness that they've discovered is correct for them. And whatever it is for them may be different for you. So be aware of that. And that's where the mouthpiece choices come in. You may need less, uh, the more passive you become, the more resonant your sound is, you need to keep energy and core in the center 
So you may be able to bring the cup in as you become more of a passive player. Then you will probably go too far, and then you'll need to go a little bit more um, with a cup depth that's a little deeper to get the more core of sound. Um, we all make mistakes, and I'm still figuring things out uh, at my age, and it was really fascinating for me to discover this and, and start thinking about this, and I'm still thinking about it, but I wanted to share it with you, and I, I hope it helps your playing. Uh, think about being passive, so that you can become more resonant, but not so passive that you get a, a donut hole in your sound and no core whatsoever. That's where the recording comes in. Record yourself, listen, and we'll meet at the finish line together sometime. <laughs> we'll see you around. Take care. Mm -hmm.